we were trying to make yeah. the documentary version of The Wire. About 40% of the residents here in Flint are in poverty. Quick news, I'm Jinx. Flint, Michigan residents need a ton of help. Where toxic water supply has been making residents sick since 2014. The for Flint! Nothing's getting done. Those who couldn't escape, they decided to poison. I'm offended. I'm so offended. Part of the motivation of working in Flint in the first place is it's not one dimensional. It's not just a poor city. It's not just a city with a water crisis. It's a city with people that are going through this thing. They've been fighting for a long time. It's a really important historical place in America. It's, you know, a lightning rod for other communities in America like this. So there's all this other pieces to this thing that are beyond the water crisis and national media covered the water crisis really well you know that's we were there we wanted to be in the psychological space of what it was like to go through all this stuff we are inundated by violence there's just not enough of us poverty breeds crime then you throw in there a water crisis Simultaneously across the country, there was all these issues going on with uh, officer-involved shootings, and uh, I think we were very interested in figuring out how to, you know, get inside a police department, how to try to better understand what goes on inside a police department. How does it work? How does it function? Who becomes a cop? For what reasons? Yeah. And we just thought, you know, Flint would be an interesting place to explore that. We were trying to look at a system uh, through the eyes of individuals, human beings, and like try to like experience what it's like to be a police officer in a community like Flint with politics over here and water crisis over here and, and uh, you know, police shootings over here and like get in the heads of all the people that were involved in it. And so if they were ever to do more of this, I think what we would do is we would shift to like the education system in Flint or like shift to the journalism uh, point of view in Flint. So, you know, the police was th this particular you know, the thing that's out right now is really through the POV of the police, but like, there are other ways that we could, you know, evoke that sort of similar model. You killing yourself. The man not killing you, you killing you. I'm sick of fighting. I'm sick of seeing my own people getting hurt. I'm sick of fighting with my own people. We had all these different opinions, but we, we, we kind of placed them as, you know, one voice in a sense. What's the community feeling about these situations? Right. The right? general sentiment of yeah. the community. And at the end of the day, it's like you can't tell everybody's story, right? right? And I think w what we hadn't seen is what do the police even think about is going on? Mm -hmm. you know, nationally as well as very specifically in Flint, right? So that was the idea, it was kind of like, how can you tell everybody's story? And I think in, in talking with community members, you know, there's a general sentiment. So their POV is there. Um, but again, it's like, we can't, you know, can't go home with everybody, yeah. you know, it's hard. Inside of Flint, we found that, you know, working with Clarissa in our first film, you know, I mean, there's a, there's this, uh, there's a candidness in Flint. I mean, folks from Flint believe in Flint, uh, they, they believe in the history of Flint, they remember it, they all have family that were at one point or another connected to the industry, and so they believe in this spirit, and so there is this attitude there, where like despite how, you know, effed up, you know, this news report is about, you know, Flint, or this, this piece of information is about Flint, like, folks still believe in it, and there's a passion there. We saw it in both the people, the community, as well as some of these officers. And also just like, who becomes a cop, and especially a cop in Flint, why do they do it? You know, so. It's not necessarily empathy, always that's part of it, but I think it's really just like a complicated look at these systems. Yeah, and doing it in a super intimate way, a personal way, right? Like when we ended up getting, I mean, kind of unprecedented access to this department and to some of these officers. And we were with officers, you know, we were with rookies. We were with 20 year vets. We were with white cops, black cops, cops from Flint, cops not from Flint. And so you really get this complex picture of these different people's points of view. Right. And so I think we all hope that, you know, empathy is is part of it. But it's also about, you know, being able to listen and kind of understand different people's points of view at the same time. Right. And try to understand how does this relationship even work in a city like Flint? You know, I mean, 30 years of of poverty adds up when GM provides this, you know, great backbone to a city. Flint was the poster child for the American dream. Right. I mean, that's the backdrop. 30 years ago, they had the highest median income in the country. Today, it has the lowest. So it's not, it's not an insignificant place. It's the birthplace of General Motors, mm -hmm. right? I find the whole thing infuriating. For four decades, Flint has been this like abandoned city and nobody but Flintstones are working to really fix it. 
politicians come and go, the water crisis happens, the national media shows up, they get all excited, they're like, we gotta do something about this, and then they all leave. And the people on the ground are still trying to make it work. And you know, that's police and community, you know, the new mayor's there, she's trying to make it work. The police chief that we documented in the show, he's trying to make it work, but they're doing it by themselves. And, you know, no investment, no government sort of programs to really deal with poverty. Like this stuff is just a, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you know, if we hold these, you know, American value things, so, so if, we, if we think the constitution's so important and we can't give up guns, why can't we, all, like, why, does it, why doesn't this matter too? I mean, it's ridiculous.